We are back with a second unpopular opinion video and I am so excited. I love to do these videos so much because I get to share a lot of my opinions and see how the viewers are reacting to various things. The videos are super interactive because everyone has an opinion on everyone else's opinion, which is good. But make sure to keep it light and fun in the comments because this video is all in good fun. We may be discussing bigger picture issues, but I always want it to remain positive at the end. Comment below some more unpopular opinions. And one last thing, make sure you're subscribed so you can stay up to date with me and the community posts and even get in videos in the future. To get us started, I'm going to give a little meta unpopular opinion about unpopular opinions. Whenever someone does a video like this, there's always comments that are like, oh, these are not unpopular opinions, and that's true a lot of the time. So let's get some of the popular unpopular opinions out of the way before we get into the rest of the video. Rapid fire style. Raven wasn't robbed on either of her seasons, there were queens with better track records, and especially in All-Stars 1, her team was in the bottom three times. She is one of the most influential people to come out of Drag Race and is the blueprint for so many different queens. So of course she is a legend in that regard, but the winners had more justified wins. Jan was not robbed for the Rusical, Gigi gave just as good of a performance, and they liked Gigi's runway better. That episode was just extremely hard to judge because it's the best Rusical ever and everyone had such an amazing performance. If anyone was robbed of top placement that episode, look at Jada. The Lipsy for the Crown is a tired format and all the novelty has gone away. It ruins overarching stories in favor quick thrills, and we need to start switching up the format. Something about All-Stars 2 being overrated, whether it be Reggie Rochu, some of the performances, or just the season overall. With time, people are going to like different attributes about different seasons, so in your eyes, it may be overrated, but I think it's properly rated. It's not my favorite, but it's praised for a good reason, the queens, the challenges, basically everything about it. Those were the main ones that I saw that people still think are unpopular. Don't worry, you have the backing from so many people. They are pretty popular opinions now. Anyways, let's get into some of your unpopular opinions. I'm going to try and go from lighter opinions to more big picture opinions, so let's get started with Macho Man is one of the best lip syncs and had one of the best reveals. I completely agree with this opinion. I did a full video dissecting reveals, and this was one of the ones that I turned to as one of the best. The energy of the wig reveal combined with it just being Peppermint, one of the best lip syncers of all time. It is infectious, and I can watch it on repeat. Hey, hey, hey. And going off of that, both of the queens give such an amazing performance here. Peppermint had so much variation in everything that she was doing. She went from giving comedy to amazing dance moves back to comedy. And if music was the first sign, then Macho Man was the sign that solidified Peppermint as a lip sync assassin, probably the best? Maybe not the best, but very, very clearly up there. What helps this lip sync so much is the energy that the judging panel gives and the fact that a lot of the other lip syncs on the season were definitely not as good. I mean, we just came off of Cool for the Summer and Greedy, two lip syncs where queens were not really giving it. So to have this fun lip sync right before the end where two queens turn it, it was just uh, such a great ending. Definitely underrated and definitely up there with one of my favorites. A quick shout out to today's sponsor, Fetch. Oh yeah, we're making Fetch happen. I wasn't too aware of Fetch before they approached me, but after we got in contact, I started to use the app and I'm really impressed. Fetch is a rewards app that lets you scan receipts from literally anywhere for points that go towards rewards. Whether it be groceries, makeup, pet products, any retail receipt, Fetch has you covered. I've been starting to do drag makeup recently and I'm so excited to show you guys, but that means I've been buying a lot of makeup. I like to email my receipts to me because it's a lot easier to keep track of and Fetch has you covered there too. Not only can you scan physical receipts, but you can also scan e-receipts and that's perfect for me. And even if you forget to do it right away, Fetch lets you scan receipts up to two weeks old. And after you scan your receipt and get your points, they start to build up and then you can redeem your points for hundreds of rewards. I'm talking gift cards from Amazon, Visa, Starbucks, Walmart, so many more, and it's amazing because this app is completely free. The process is quick. You either go in with your camera or it scans your email for eligible receipts. And boom, right away, I got some new points, saving up for an Ulta gift card so I can go get more makeup. The cycle's never gonna end. And of course, I gotta hook you up too. You can use code JackFed, and after you scan your first receipt, you'll get 5,000 extra points. It's a limited time offer, so you guys should download the app. Links are in the description. And now, let's get back to the video. The six-way lip sync was actually iconic all the drama, the queens fighting, it was so entertaining. Watching it back, yeah, I kind of agree. It was chaotic, but honestly, pretty fun. The producers at the time were definitely trying to make this the big lip sync moment of the season, and I don't think it really went in their favor, but they still got sorry, not sorry, so we're chilling. It was definitely just for show because I don't think this was a good idea on a competition standpoint, but once I get past all the chaos, I actually find myself eating up the mystery and the uncertainty. The energy goes from what did I just watch to then a painstakingly suspenseful one-by-one -one elimination 
elimination call into a really, really sad elimination because I think Honey had so much potential on the season and I want to see her back. The way they had to edit it and the lack of space, it was never really going to come out clean, but I end up enjoying it more as I watch it back. Yara's win in the talent show on All Star 6 was justified. First of all, I would love to show this performance, but I don't think that's very guidelines of me, so we're going to do more of Yara's performance over the course of the season as the clips. So were there other talents that showed off a little more technical skill? Yeah, definitely. But if we're going off of competition and strategy, if you want to do well in the competition, you have to appeal to the main judge. And that is RuPaul, and RuPaul loved this. The way the commenter phrased this, I don't think that they're saying that this was like the undeniable winner, I just think that they're saying it's justified. People were definitely up in arms about this one because everyone saw what Raja did and thought it was super innovative, but I do understand the justification for Yara because Ru ate this up and at the end of the day for challenges like the talent show and snatch game, entertaining Ru is the most important thing. Jan's verse on Show Up Queen was great and it fit the criteria for the challenge. Uh, I don't know if I completely agree with this opinion, there are parts of it that I do agree with. They definitely played it up in the edit of the episode that Jan's verse was just missing the mark and I don't think it completely missed, but here's where I think it went off the rails. Basically every verse of Show Up Queen starts out with I was this, I was that, and this is how you can overcome that, but Jan's never really got there. Take a verse like Raja's which I think is just so great, she talks about feeling away and then says that she has to shake it off, she says her mantras to herself, and then she switches it to you. She's basically saying, I feel some type of way sometimes, but I overcome it, here's how, and this is how you can do it as well. And at the end of the day, I think that was the assignment at hand, convincing others this is how you can overcome something, but to Jan, because she was getting such mixed feedback from the judges, this was her response, and instead of convincing others, she was trying to convince herself through the lyrics. I hope that made sense, the verse isn't bad by any means, and the peppy 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 definitely is really fun. Sasha versus Pepper Peppermint in the finale is better than Sasha versus Shay, in the sense that Sasha versus Peppermint is a lot more balanced between the performers. I feel like this one's a little tough to fully encapsulate. I guess it comes down to what you value in a lip sync, a very even performance with both people doing super well, or a super iconic performance, in this case one of the most influential on the show. I'll first say that I think It's Not Right But It's Okay is one of the most underrated lip syncs because it does live in the shadow of So Emotional. The energy, the reveals, the song itself just being a perfect cap off song. Song, it is so amazing, but personally, I think if one performance is just so amazing, I value that a little more than both performers being super even. So to me, I think So Emotional is still slightly better, but this lip sync is still iconic. You are making a fool of me. Oh. UK3 isn't as bad as the fandom makes it out to be. I completely agree, it's a really good season, it's just tough coming off of the heels of UK2 and All Stars 6. Something like UK2 was supposed to be a mess because of lockdown, but they really held it together and made a very cohesive season. So with less factors that are supposed to be affecting the show, people were expecting a lot from UK3, but then internal factors started to pop up and, you know, it got a little crazy. Victoria had a lot of eyes on her because of what she meant to the show, and she was already doing so well in the beginning. And then one injury later, they had to scramble to change some things around. I think the middle portion of the season is the hardest to watch, but by the end, they really brought it back together, and I think it finished extremely strong. There were some misses along the way, I've never really been a huge fan of Dragaton, and of course Draglexa was not good. But the Fugly Beauty pageant, the roast, some amazing lip syncs, these were moments that I'm going to be remembering for a long time. Give this one a rewatch because I think you're going to enjoy it a lot more, and I just really like the time that this season was airing in my life. All Stars 3, aside from all the twists, was a really great season of TV. I completely agree with this, up to the two last episodes and maybe the weird can challenge that they did, All Stars 3 was on par with the previous All Stars season. Even up to Dayla's elimination, they were giving us great TV, it's just those last two episodes were either predictable or really frustrating. With every year, All Stars 3 just feels better and better, and I think people are going to recognize it as one of the greats eventually. And the last season that someone thinks is overhated, All Stars 5. Good drama, hilarious cast, some great performances, what else can you hate about it? My harsh opinions of All Stars 5 have started to fade over time, and now I'm appreciating it for what it is. The new twist was something that they were still trying to perfect, and I think it did sour the experience experience of the season just a little bit. I love the cast a ton, I think the thing that takes away from the season the most though is I really did not like the challenges. Backyard Ball, Talent Show, Stand Up, these are standard, these are fine, but SheMZ, Get 
a room. Nope, 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 nope. To me, there just wasn't a challenge of the season that I was like, yes, this defines the season, my favorite challenge. I'm gonna come back and watch it just for this. But there is one thing that keeps me coming back to the season, and that's the drama from Snatch Game and episode one. For as controversial as she is, India really served a lot of drama, and it was super, super entertaining. Especially in Snatch Game, the campaigning, the frustration, Juju just telling so many jokes, it is such high caliber TV. So this is what defines the season to me, along with the top three just being amazing. It's just the fundamentals of Drag Race were a little lacking this time around. You're a liar, and this is why Derek don't like you. Oh, why not? <laughs> The truth shall set you free. Girl, stop acting a fool. Runway should be a fixed score to better represent the money and work that goes into them. This is an interesting take that I could definitely get behind. I think having a fixed score for the runways could help make people understand how certain judging is taking place and like how a challenge winner wins the challenge. You know, like something maybe mentioned earlier, like why GG won over Jan. Oh, it's because they liked her runway better because it got a nine while Jan's got a seven, something like that. And I do like that with this fixed score, we get to sing the praises of basically every single runway that is shown, but I would hate to be a designer and then your runway that you made spend so much time on gets like a four or something i'd feel so bad there's a lot of merit to this opinion and it's cool that it also brings in a scoring system similar to like a ball so i feel like it could be really fun to do this maybe for the next all winners they add up their scores at the end and they get a certain reward or a ticket to the top four i don't know i think that could be really cool electroshock could have easily won five challenges on down under the girl group the design challenge commercial makeover and talent show this was one of the first videos i've ever done on my channel talking about electroshock I love her and I think she could have won more challenges than she did. So check that video out, but I wouldn't say all five challenges should go to her. There's a lot of talent on season one, so let's split it up just a little bit. I want to try doing two clashing ones. I don't care how rigged it is if it's a good storyline and track records should matter more. If y'all know my character at all, you know that I'm about to play the middle on this. Here's the thing. There's definitely a world where good track record and good story meet in the middle. I feel like we've seen it with Jinx, Bianca, Evie, all of these queens had really good track records and also the best story on the season. Okay, maybe Adore had a better story, but Bianca had a great one too. Too rigged of a story is going to get the fans up in arms, but sticking to track record without having a good story, that's not a satisfying ending. So if I had to choose between these two opinions on which one I agree with more, I think a better story is always going to be better than a better track record, if that makes sense. First of all, I don't want to burst any bubbles, but the points per episode system is not a real implementation on the show. They'll go based off of challenge wins or or how they're doing in the competition on all-star seasons, but they're not sitting down and doing the math of, oh, 10 points for winning the episode. So when someone says, oh, this person should have won because they had a better track record at 3.5 points per episode, that means nothing to the showrunners. At the end of the day, the person who is going to get crowned is the person that they think is the best for the brand at that point. If that happens to be the person with the best track record like Bianca, that's perfect. But majority of the time, the person who has the best potential for the brand is the person with the best storyline. So that's why track record is never going to take into account as much. People think that in the early seasons, track record was the most important thing and they always followed it. But if we're going off of this PPE system that I just dismantled, Nina Flowers had a better PPE than BB. Manila was slightly better than Raja. You get the picture. I completely understand where the Cabbage Master is coming from when they complain about track record not really meaning that much, because of course this is supposed to be a competition reality show. That is how the show is branded, but there is too much behind the scenes stuff going on for it to ever come down to only, oh my god, sorry, I lost my breath, for it to come down to only track record. There is too much lip syncing on the show, big example is season 14. I do agree from a show standpoint, we are getting a little excessive with the amount of lip syncing that is going on. I love that the performers like Georges and Jasmine get to show so much with their lip syncing capabilities, but the novelty starts to wane if we see so many lip syncs in a single season. And it starts to wane even more if people are not getting eliminated after these lip syncs, There's there's less tension, less drive, and overall just less reason to watch. And I feel like licensing these songs may be taking away a lot of the budget from the season, so I just, I don't know. When we get a Smackdown or a lip sync that's just really good, I'm gonna be entertained and it makes really great TV, but now I'm just starting to think maybe we should pull back just a little bit. The phrase too much of a good thing can be applied here most. Aquaria is one of the most influential queens from the show, but she's not really treated as such. The influence Aquaria has had on the archetype of fashion 
queen can only really be matched by maybe Trinity the Tuck being the influence on pageant queens. Like we go in with this preconceived notion of, oh, a fashion queen or a pageant queen, they're not gonna be very funny in any of the acting or comedy challenges, they're just gonna serve good looks. But I think that Trinity and Aquaria especially were the first two to really break that down, Aquaria even more so. People were freaking out and amazed that the person who won Snatch Game was also the person who won the ball. That used to be a very big deal, but now the fashion queen archetype has the front runner fashion queen win the ball and snatch game every time. I hope we start to move past this played up edit of, oh, these fashion girls, they have no idea about comedy. Wait, they can do comedy? Because we've seen it three times now with three different front runners, and it's great because these queens are so talented, but we're not going to be underestimating them anymore because we know they have it in them. Milk was ahead of their time when it came to fashion. I feel like this one is relatively popular as well. I mean, when Milk came back for season three, they were given their flowers for influencing a runway on a season after theirs. But yeah, when I go back and watch season six, I cringe at how uncomfortable they are when they see facial hair or Milk in boy RuPaul drag. I'm really happy that Milk had the courage to wear that type of stuff on the show because it did definitely break down a lot of the walls. It was a much needed clue of, oh, maybe drag isn't all about dressing up as women and having huge bajoinkers, you know what I mean? Drag is so much more than that, but of course there is still merit to that type of style of drag. And that brings me into the next couple points. Drag race is not the best representation for actual drag, and people want more rough around the edges queens on the show. To the first point, I describe RuPaul's Drag Race the same way I describe RuPaul. A very accessible version of something that is entertaining beyond belief, but once you start digging deeper, you realize that's not all what it is. Drag Race has helped to break down the walls of a lot of different negative stereotypes of queer people, it introduces people to concepts in a very easy way, and as it keeps getting bigger, people are going to realize that representation matters and this is great. But when you're someone like me in the drag community, you see all these different artists and you realize that Drag Race is not where it stops for drag. It is such a double-edged sword because we need and want the representation on TV, and on surface level it is good representation. But then once you're actually in the community, you realize how it messes with different groups like expectations of performers, and it just gets frustrating. I'm always going to be cheering and appreciating everything that Drag Race has done. It literally gave me a career and so many opportunities. But of course, I feel so hard for the people who are affected by the show because of how it's changed the pop culture landscape. It is such a huge topic and I can't fully get into it here, Bible Girl and Drag Detective did an amazing video on it. What I can say, and of course what rings true for my channel, is support local drag, support queens online, just spread some love. Anyways, getting back to the second point, they want more rough around the edges queens on the show. It's frustrating because I don't think it's ever gonna happen. And that's because of what we just mentioned, I just think that they'll never be treated correctly because the caliber of drag that goes on there is so high. We're unfortunately not really gonna get that representation of local drag on the come up on the show because the show is just expecting so much out of the queens at this point. I want it to happen so bad just so viewers get the sense of what local drag is like, but I just don't think it's gonna happen and that's frustrating. Maybe they can do something about having like a workroom talk saying, oh, this isn't all what drag is, something like that. The thing is, we can at least always hope. And finally, I wanna do two of my opinions. One is more unpopular than the other. Let's get into them. In the same realm of track record, casting rules on Drag Race don't exist. Let's stop pretending they do. Every single time there's some expectation of how the rules work and how people are going to get cast, there's a left field casting and fans are either shocked, frustrated, or confused every single time. I feel like everyone wants to go based off of All Stars 1 and 2 casting, it's their second chance and that's it. But since BB came back, I feel like we should give up the idea that casting has any rules behind it. Latrilla, Juju and Alexis, Ginger, Pangina, these are queens who broke the rules, but the rules don't exist. We're now at the point where a judge was cast on the show as a competitor. I'm fully now expecting them to cast someone who hasn't even competed or touched the show at all. And honestly, let's let them do that. If they're casting these queens, it's for good reason. They think they'll make good TV. Let's just enjoy it. And finally, I'm tired of plus size queens turning it on the runway and not getting the same attention. This is the more popular opinion because I think over time it's getting better and better, but I still don't think we're at the same level of praise. I will fully die on the hill that Eureka, Candy, Lawrence, Deja, these are fashion queens down. They have an aesthetic, they know what works for their body size, and it looks so good. And yes, I did say candy. We're a couple of her runways a little 
you know? Yes, they were. But when she hit, she hit. So please, give them the chance, give them the praise. They really, really deserve it. That's about it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I think the opinions were a little more unpopular than normal. I got some things in the works. I'm getting a lot done because I'm currently on a trip with some downtime, so I'm writing some scripts. Once again, make sure to like and subscribe and sponsor Jack, take us out. Thanks again to Fetch for sponsoring today's video. You can use my promo code JackFed to get 5,000 points after you scan your first receipt. It's a really great app. I'm gonna go buy more makeup. It's a little more justified now. And I'll see you soon with another video.